Okay, so what is the uh, what entry type was I talking about? So we said we're gonna cover yeah the medium risk. So the last time we talked about that low risk entry, right? Where you have a daily reject daily and an H four breakout. Now, this is a daily reject daily, and this is the H4 breakout, correct? So you wait for pullback to the apex, whatever level is there, and then boom, sell, right? So sometimes price might give you that daily rejection, but it doesn't give you the H4 breakout. It doesn't give you that. So if you wait for the pullback and sell, this will not be considered low risk one time frame, lower, break, uh, lower, lower breakout um, entry type. So it will be considered medium risk, right? Rejection, because you only have one sign, which is the rejection. Even if it's with the storyline, it might not be that good to take, okay? So that is one entry type, okay? So the second entry type that we're gonna talk about today is after the breakout, it doesn't, price doesn't necessarily have to go all the way up. So it doesn't go, have to go to the apex, okay, um, in order for it to sell. It can go to this QM right here, sell. It can go to this gap right here and sell. So how do you sell from these levels, right? So you will have gap, gap, right? You have a QM, you have another gap, and you have the apex, right? So how do you sell from these levels? You have to refine the H4 to h1 right so the refinement should be uh, basically okay please okay okay let's wait for yusuf you can stop recording and then start again when he joins Recording now. All right, amazing. So let's uh, repeat. So you might have a daily level and a daily rejection and an H4 breakout, but price is not going to always pull back to the apex and then sell, right? And let me explain something, Yusuf. You said that the levels that are below the apex are high risk no bro they're not high risk if you're good at refining them to the h1 and use the confirmation on the m5 it's not high risk bro. it can even be a low risk sell in here so you have three ways to sell besides the apex so if price doesn't want to reach there okay yeah, that's the only place where you're going to put an instant limit. I mean, you can put in here also, but that's like where you're confidently going to put a sell limit. But let's say price is approaching. There is a gap on H4, right? And then on H1, you have a gap with CC, right? Did we explain CC in the last session? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you have an H1 gap with CC. Just take it, bro. Instantly, boom. And don't expect to price to start to swing from these levels, except for the QM and the apex. These are the levels that are going to start to swing. It's not a gap level, It's it rarely does. I mean, it does start to swing, but it rarely does. So I suggest you TP at two R from the gap levels in here and here and here and here. Okay, so you're referring to H1 gap CC or H1 A level or A level with CC, whatever. Okay, and then sell from it. That's the first way. The second way, is to look if any of these H4 levels align with the, any of the daily uh, fresh levels. So you have four H4 levels, but then when you go to the daily chart, you might find something like this, right? You might have a level in here, okay? And H4 levels in there. Which one is aligning with this daily level? Is it this one, this one, this one, this one? It's basically this one, right? So price, okay, um, is going to favor this level more than the others. So that's the second way to identify which level you want to sell from. Price goes there, you sell there, right? Now, the third dumbest, easiest way if you don't want to make efforts, okay, monitor all your levels and then go to the M5. What's What M5 is going to show you is something like this, right? M5... 
right here. Ah, sorry. This is your H1 refined level. And this is your M5. Boom, 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 boom. Structure up, structure up. So you see this uptrend, just to draw a trend line on it using V levels one, two, uh, V levels. And it doesn't really have to be accurate if you understand price action. It's pretty simple, guys. You learn this in baby pips. Uptrend, descendant trend, uh, whatever. Uh, so once this trend breaks, you would want to just wait for a small pullback. Not really pull back to the whole trend line or whole A level, just a small pullback. And then you can sell from there, right? This is basically confirming that the storyline, uh, what the fuck am I saying? That this level might give you a 2R reaction, okay? So this is one way to sell without waiting for the apex, okay? Um, yeah, do you have any question? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, from, um, we should put the trend line from the line chart? Yeah. From the clothing? Let me, let, me, let me give you an example here. Let's say um, we wanted to buy at this level, right? Go to mm -hmm. the five. Now, you see this downtrend, lower high, lower high, yeah. lower low, lower high, lower. Just draw a trend line in here, like this one, right here. Boom. See that line chart or yeah, A you. levels. Okay. Now, once it broke fully, you don't have to wait to pull back here. Just a small, like, buy. Okay. Understood? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Yeah. Nice. Amazing. So, uh, yeah, that's the third way uh, that you can sell by from. So, we talked about continuations level last session. And I said, if you're so good with the H1, you don't have to use the M5 confirmation. But let's say that will take you some time. You can use the M5 confirmation. Now, you have this level. Okay. And then on H1, it's a gap that is also fresh. I told you guys that I don't prefer when the H4 is fresh and the H1 is fresh. I mean, it's takeable when it's the uh, when it's the only level is there that is there, but I don't like to uh, take it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the M5 and then wait for price to do me something like this, and then wait. Then once it breaks, boom, buy. Okay, TP at one R to R. <clears throat> you can do that with the continuations. You can do that, but. Um, it might not give you the most accurate entry. That's why I prefer using the H1 instead and instant limits. Now, uh, we're going to talk about the scalping. Okay, This scalping, if you're trying to get funded, it's not for you. Okay, If you're trading a proper, this is not for you. Okay, If you want to basically practice the multi-time frame and uh, understand, and, um, understand it uh, at the back of your head. This is for you, okay? It's not even for flipping. I guess it's just like for holding trades and having buys and sells because the, the win rate of it is quite low. It's like 60% win rate. It's not that low, but it's lower than the other entry type. So this is how it goes. You will have any fresh level on any time frame above M15. So let's say you have an M15 level. M15 level, you would want to drop two time frames lower. Two time frames lower is is what guys? M3. M3. Do we use M3? I mean it's here, but M5 M1. M1. Exactly. M1. So what do you do in M1? You look for a breakout on M1, external breakout. Once you have the external breakout, wait for the pullback to the last candle and then sell. Boom. Sell here, put stop loss above the box by a little bit, right? And then sell for one, two R. Okay, um, very simple. Let me let me let me show you an example in here. Uh, do we have an example? Okay, let's take a look at this one. So A level in here, you go to the M one, right? External breakout in here, then price. Pulls back to the last candle, which is in here, right? You don't want to sell at it. Put stop loss above the high by a little bit, whatever. Then TP at 1 and 2 R. Boom. That is your scalping method. Uh, the win rate is pretty good, but uh, it's not for prop firms. Okay? It's not really for prop firms. So if you want to trade prop firms, flip accounts, whatever, hold these continuation entries. So if you want to enter at an M30 fresh level, you're going to use what time frame for entry? Uh, 
five. And five, exactly. Nice. Now let's talk about engulfing. What is engulfing? It's in another way of continuation entries. And this is where I mostly take my counter trends from. So what is basically engulfing? Okay, you have many types. You have a low, high, lower low, and then a higher high. And then you wait for price to pull back. It's really easy. Wait for price to pull back to the last candlestick, right? Last candlestick and then buy. So I personally use H1, M30, and M15 for that. Uh, I'm going to give you an example. So H1, okay, you have a low, a high, a lower low, and then price breaks this high. Last candlestick is right here. Boom. I wait for price to pull back and then buy. Now, you can refine this down. So H1, you go to the M30. So M30, you find the last candle, which is in here. And then go to the M15 and do the same thing. And then when price pulls back, this is your layering area. You basically layer here and your stop loss is 10 to 20 pips below the range. Okay. Uh, you can do this uh, continu continuously, basically with a storyline. If you do it against the storyline, it would look something like this. So you look at the previous uh, structure. Let's go to the H4 here. Um, so you have a high, low, higher high. Then price goes down. So you would want to take uh, the last candlestick above and then refine it down. Let's go to the H1. Right, H1. And then take the last candle on the H1 and refine it down to the M30. Um, I'm going to explain something else to neglect the bad angle things. In this case, this one is bad. I wouldn't use it. I'm going to explain why. So we go to the M30, take the last candle, and that will be your engulfing. But there is a rule to this. Let's say you have a candlestick, and then on top of it, there is another candle. Now, where is the lowest candlestick? It's right here. But is this candlestick fresh? What do I mean by that? Is it tapped by a wick? Is it tapped by a wick? If it is tapped by a wick, if price comes back, it's not good to buy here. It might react, but it's not the very best entry uh, zone. Okay. Uh, so what's best is when you have something like this. A wick in here leaves a displacement, whatever, this little gap in here. Then when price comes back, this is a good area for buy. Now let's take an example at Ingolfi that I took. Coach, uh, yeah, so you, coach. Hmm? yeah, I mean, you only use uh, H4 and Golfi? H4, H1, M30. Okay, got it. Yeah. No, no, but your main analysis is on H4 and Golfi and you go down uh, on shell um, M30 um, and M30, M15. Oh. Yeah, you can go down to M15. Okay, but, but from each point golfing. What you say? I mean, I mean, you start from H four in golfing. You can start from H four or H one, whatever suits ah, you. Ah, okay, okay, good, okay, good. Yeah, let's say, let's say you just go to M fifteen, and find the good day in golfing for sell. You can sell from it, no worries. But just make sure that, um, not make sure like just know in the back of your head that it's against storyline, so it's gonna be risky. Don't put a lot of leverage on it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the perfect scenario is where it puts a low, high, lower, low, and then higher, high, and that higher, high breaks this previous high. So this is the perfect scenario. And then this candle is fresh, price pulls back, entry. H4, H1, M30, all aligned. This is the best setup. But sometimes my price do this, right? Boom. This is also valid, right? This is also valid. When price pulls back, it goes up. But it's not the very best entry. Now, you might have also something like this. Boom. Price pulls back and then goes up. This is, uh, you can say it's high risk when it's against the storyline. But when it's with the storyline, it's almost medium risk. But it still works. Now, let me show you an example of that. So price here has a candle. It went up by a lot, right? boom, it broke this candle. So this candle became an engulfing candle, right? But it's with the storyline. Price pulls back, buys, okay? So you can refine it down to the H1. Boom. 
And on the H1, you have the second pattern, a low high, a higher low, and then breaks. It's not the best, but it still does the job. Comes back, buys, right? You're fine down to the M30, and that is your buy zone. Okay, it's full, like, engulfing is everywhere, everywhere. Candle, boom, breaks, comes back, buy. Okay, so, uh, yeah, do you guys have any questions? You don't have to complicate the engulfing guys, okay? It's very simple. Any questions? It's basically a continuation. What you say, bro? It's just basically a continuation. Yeah, you can say it's a continuation. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's another type of of continuations. Any other questions? About the scalping method, about uh, engulfing? Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you this. Let's say you have an engulf in here, right? And then price comes to it. And it doesn't react and then it breaks. This engulfing basically failed. So when price comes to the failed engulfing, you can sell. Okay, very simple. Uh, please don't tell me order block, whatever, okay? This is nothing has to do with order blocks, nothing. Okay, it's it's way simplistic than order blocks because, uh, yeah, I just don't want you to mix between the two things. Any other questions? So I mean, uh, the orders you put are uh, limit orders, right? Um, for uh, for starting and ending and go. Uh, can you give me just one moment? I'll be right back. What, what, what were we talking about? I think uh, engulfing. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's repeat that. We have this pattern here, low, high, lower low, price breaks this previous high. When price pulls back to the last candle, it's gonna go up, okay? So you mark the full candle. This is your engulfing. This is a very good engulfing, why? Because it's the perfect pattern, like low, high, lower, low, then breaks this high, and it is aligned with the storyline, right? And also what, guys? What did we have? The daily reject daily and H4 breakout in here. So with this engulfing, you can precise your entry down to this low risk in here, right? And then maybe refine it, right? Let's refine it to this engulfing in here, the last candle that is in here. Why did I pick this one and not the black? Well, check this out. Is this black one fresh in here? Look at this. See this wick? It came and tested it. So this candle is not really good as an engulfing. So I'll just pick this one and refine it down to the M30. Right, what do we have on M30? We have this one, but it's way too low here. Right? It's it's lower. And it's also lower than the H4 level that we have as a low risk marked in here. So I personally would take this area right here for buys. Okay, I'm gonna stack my buys in here. It's not a signal, guys. Huh? Don't go full module. <laughs> it is. So, yeah, that's pretty much it about engulfing. Do you guys have any, any questions about it? Okay, I guess not. So, let me give you a quick hint about what's consequent encouragement. Consequent encouragement is the 50% of anything. But us, we're gonna use it on 50% of a wick. So you're gonna have a wick, boom, boom, 50%, right? This is your what? Your 50%, how do you use this? So let's say you have H4 breakout, press pulling back to this H4 apex and on the daily candle, you're going to have a week, right? 
a week. So if you have a week on a daily candle and it has an H4 level in here, you would want to look at the 50% of this daily candle to check if that 50% is higher or lower than the H4 level. You always take what's higher. If the H4 level is higher than the consequent encouragement, you don't sell at the consequent encouragement. You sell at the H4 apex. But if the consequent encouragement is above the apex, you would want to wait price to go to that consequent encouragement and sell. But in this scenario, you're not going to use 30 pip stop loss. You're going to use 7 to 10 pip stop loss and hold it the same way you're going to hold that low risk. So you're going to have a huge freaking RR. Now I'm going to give you an example. So you have here daily reject daily. This daily reject this daily, right? You go to the H4. What do you have on H4? A low that has been made in here and then got broken out by this candle. Price pulling back to this H4 and you can sell, okay? That's your normal perspective of, of a low risk sell. But when you have a daily wick, let's mark the daily wick if it has a 50% above it or not. Now, the 50% of this wick is above the H4. We said we always take the one that is above. Check this out, 50%, look at that. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay, so breaks out, pulls back. Instead of taking this, it's going there. Check yeah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, take a lot of my friend, Habibi. So here you put seven pips stop loss. And boom. Why is it seven? I usually put five, but when you have spread, just go for seven. And you hold to the next daily or whatever. Now, this is like 57R. Imagine if it's like 10%. That's 570%. Okay. Yes. Damn, bro. <laughs> Let me give you another example. Uh, another example. Another example. Yeah. Oh, oh, coach. Yes. The 50% level is only for daily week, right? Yes, daily week. Uh, for this session, I just said I'll give you a quick hint. But in the next sessions, we will uh, learn how to use the consequent encouragement on the M5, M15, H1 to refine your entries. Okay. okay. So, yeah, you can use it definitely on the other time frames. Price goes there and just reacts. Uh, let me look for the daily examples. I forgot when was the last one. Was this one of them? I don't think so. It was close to it. Uh, by the way, there is this thing about the consequent encouragement. During the week, it actually hits. But then when the market closes on the week and it opens again, it gives you quite a bug and it shows you that it didn't hit. Uh, so um, in that example, I think it hit and it took that buy. But let me check. Yeah, I don't know why it, 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 it shows that it's not him. Daily, daily, daily. Right, look at this. Boom in here. H4, you can take that as a um, high risk cell. Okay, that can work. Price goes up. We have this as a target. If you want to take a low risk, a uh, high risk sell, you can take the 50% of this week right here. Boom, right there. Okay, in what conditions? It has to be higher than an H4 level. Don't want to sleep teachers more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bro, of course. Um, now, the 50% is below the level. So what do we do in this example? We take the level instead of the 50%, okay? So this is probably um, our next high risk logical sell for us, okay? Oh my God, I don't remember when was my last CE entry. Um, yeah, for example, let's say this level instead of taking it there. 
we just want to take the 50% of this wick right here and boom, right? See that? Take the lower one. So this 50% is below the H4 and H1. Um, yeah, so you can buy there using the 7 pip stop loss. As you can see here, also, price pulls back. We'd want to buy there again, right? So uh, the setup appears most of the time, but it doesn't really change the win rate. When price wants to go up from a certain level, it will go up, okay? So sometimes you will use the consequent encouragement. This is what's going to happen. It's going to stop you out on seven pips, goes to the eighth pip, and then goes up, which is fine. But uh, I, um, from my experience, seven pips, stop loss is the best um, stop loss for the consequent encouragement. But if you're hesitating to take that and you're escaping from that uh, community of low low basically stop loss uh just just don't go with the seven pips okay you can go with 15 20 pips okay i'm trying to find examples i can't find any bro it's quite <laughs> okay i think there was one here yeah okay so yeah that's 50 percent. what do you have here you have a daily reject daily and what h4 breakout right h4 breakout price pulls back to this level where is the consequent encouragement it's above it here right now you can refine that consequent encouragement from the daily to this week right here and take a better one okay boom and that is your perfect sell okay you can refine your consequent encouragement from the daily to the h4 if it has the wick on that same area of the a level okay you guys see how accurate this is this is just a hint more details about consequent encouragement will be mind fucking blowing in the next sessions okay uh, on m5 m15 will be just mind blown okay you guys have any questions ce setup on arv level yeah you can you can use that on arv or uh, even a gap bro <clears throat> there is also the reversed CE basically when price breaks it might pull back to the 50% of the yeah we're going to talk about that in the in later sessions so any other questions guys Questions, guys. <laughs> I guess everything is clear, isn't it? Yeah, so far so good. Okay, amazing, amazing. So, um, do you want a homework? Uh, you didn't guys do the last homework I gave you. Be my signal providers. You haven't really been giving me a lot of signals besides Yusuf and some other, some other guys in here. So. Um, just find setups, send them in the group chat, and yeah, that's it. All right, guys, if you have any more questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the group at any given time, All right? I'll catch you up in the next one. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. No worries, guys. No worries. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.